Alrighty, welcome to another 4 on 4. We're using Sam's Cube again, which is, again, the vintage cube with uh, some twists and turns. You get, you know, Just Guy Ascendancy, Price of Progress, whatnot. And uh, the additional incentive, if you 3-0, you get to add and remove a card. So, one of the one of my viewers, Gustavo, had a really good suggestion, which was, I should say which card I'm going to add in before the draft in case I 3-0. Uh, well, I'm not going to 3-0 with this pack because I think I'm first picking a Lelio, which is just fine. It's that or Volcanic or Ponder. I'm not really in love with any of these options, but I guess I'll take Lelia. If I 3-0 this draft, what would I add? What would I cut? I think I would cut Collector Oof because I don't like playing against that card. <laughs> uh, as to what I would add, hmm, that's a good question. I might add Cloud of Fairies. I think that card's pretty sweet. Uh, I always loved having that card in cube, but that starts with 3-0ing and, uh, well, as much as I love Time Spiral, if I just take Raghavan here, I have Raghavan plus Lelia. That is quite the start. Yeah, I guess that's where I'm at. So Isaac is passing to me. I'm passing to Martel. Pass Martel a Time Spiral, I suppose. Isaac passing a Raghavan, a Spiral, and then a bunch of cards that are worse. There is the Xander's Lounge here and a Pyromancer, which I'm not going to get, sadly. Probably open a piece of power or like something maybe like a Solitude you could take here. Swords to Plowshares. There's a couple other cards. Mana Drain, perhaps. I think I might even take Raghavan over Mana Drain. Eh, you know, it's kind of hard to turn down Fiery Confluence after these first two picks. There's also Skull Clamp. I do like me a Skull Clamp. I like him, too, and these cards are really good in Black Red, but just, it'd just be crazy to take a double black card here instead of a comparably good red card. Fiery Confluence might even be better. I don't know. There's also Noble Hierarch, but it, again, going into another color... Doesn't make that much sense. Or Skyclave, the Blade Splicer. I think I'm just going to take Fiery Confluence. These cards all work together. They're all aggressive. But the, but the thing is, you add a Mana Leak and a Remand, and I could just be playing a sick blue-red deck too. But starting with three very high-tier red cards, I think keeps me max flexible. Skull Clamp is colorless, but Skull Clamp is not a card I would say leaves you that flexible. There's still a variety of ways you can go, but you do need to have a bunch of one toughness creatures and ways to generate tokens to really make use of Skull Clamp. Whereas Fiery Confluence is just an amazing card. The fact that it is anywhere on the range of board sweeper for small creatures, kill a bunch of artifacts or nug the opponent, and it can do any or all of them. It's pretty nice. I mean, sometimes you're like, blow up your talisman, kill your two mana elves, take two. Sometimes you just nug them for six because they're at six. Sometimes you blow up a whole board full of artifacts. So all that together makes for a very good card. And my first two picks are both heavy red good cards. Like, I think that I should just keep going this direction. Oh, wow. This pack must have been insane. There's a Wheel of Fortune and a Hole Breacher. Well, I'm going to take Hole Breacher. This card's too messed up to pass. It's the reason to have Wheel of Fortune. And Tom can never beat this card. So... There's also a Birds of Paradise and a Fracture Identity, so this is just a really good pack. There must have been, like, this is pick four. Two pieces of power, an Orcish Bowmasters, a Swords to Plowshares, that sort of thing. But I'm going to take Whole Breacher, even if even if Isaac knows, and both Wheel of Fortune and Time Spiral are gone. Wheel being the biggest beating because it's just perfect. It's a red card here for my, you know, very, very heavy red deck, but that's okay. This pack, I think I'm going to take Sheldock. I think the Vendillion Click is good, but I've gotten a little less impressed with it these days, and both these three drops are so much better. So I'd rather just take Sheldock. I think this card is also just broken, so I don't mind taking it. And here, so there's Firebolt, which is solid, and there's Venser, and I think Venser fits pretty nicely into this into this kind of deck. And I think Firebolt's fairly replaceable. Not that Venser's irreplaceable. Oh, man, there's a Lion's Eye Diamond here. As much as I like Lion's Eye Diamond, I think I'm supposed to take Fiery Mastermind. This is a red-blue tempo deck, and a really good two-drop for, for that deck is fantastic. Passing a late Dark Ritual as well, and a Brazen Borrower, but I have Fiery Confluence, and I just picked up Venser, so I feel like Brazen Borrower is not quite as needed. This pack is blanks for me. I think I'm just going to take Sea Chrome Coast. This could be a Jeskai deck pretty easily. Not going to play the Wellspring. Kira's Followers mostly for Time Vault, or it's like a blue-green ramp card. Not really going to play Escape. And I think Prismatic Ending isn't that strong. Like, it's good if you can cast it if you're main white. It's not worth splashing. And I'd much rather just take Seacrum Coast first and open the door to play, I don't know, if I get a late Swords to Plowshares. Well, not a late Swords to Plowshares. If I get a Swords to Plowshares in a later pack, then I would be... 
I think, happy having taken that Seachrome coast here. But I like this start. Oh, and there's a Prismari command. I love Prismari command. It's also really nice with Hole Breacher. You can make them discard two cards and you make two treasures if you target them with the draw two, discard two mode. So perfect. Passing a late show and tell and just guy ascendancy og well these aren't really cards i'm too worried about okay sea chrome coast is not super relevant to me right now but i like this pack i, I i'm not going to get wheel of fortune back i do know that if i'm lucky though i'll get the fire ice back out of that pack that was uh my fourth pick so i guess my 12th pick so three more picks from here we're looking for blue red lands Sadly, Volcanic Island is gone. We do know that. Oh, Xander's Lounge came back. Okay. Yeah, I'm not a Spellseeker or a Lear deck. I think I'm just going to take a Xander's Lounge. Maybe I, I could be a Blood Tithe Harvester deck if I got the right fixing, but that starts by taking Xander's Lounge. So that was a pleasant surprise. I did not think Xander's Lounge was very likely to wheel, but just having one blue-red duel that counts as those land types means that fetch lands, land cyclers are both on... You just your mana gets so much better just by having a one. It can usually open the door to having multiple ways to get it. I would say Volcanic Island is better because I'd rather it just come into play untapped, but I'm not complaining given that I wield it. Mm. Don't think I'm gonna play Croxa. I'll take the Dragon's Rage Channeler and pass two decent white cards. There's a chance I end up with Dragon's Rage Channeler in this deck, though it's a little creature heavy, so it's not a very big chance. Okay, Fire Ice didn't come back. I guess I'll just hate a Zurn Orb here. Tom's the kind who would, who would play that card. There's also Patchwork Automaton is a kind of cool addition. Two mana, one, one, ward two, but whenever you cast an artifact spell, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. Mm. This is looking like a pretty good Fallen Shinobi deck. So I'll take that as a possibility and I'll pass a Late Knight of the Reliquary. I think Intruder Alarm has slightly more possibilities, like this plus Splinter Twin is a combo. Naturally. All right. Any time walks? No time walks. Um, but there is Lorien Revealed and Counterspell. I'm going to take out the cards that I think are basically 0%. All right. Well, given this setup, I think I'm just going to take Counterspell. I do like Lorien Revealed, but Counterspell is really good. And uh, this pack isn't the strongest or anything. Mm, neither is this pack. Wow. Getting worked here. Nothing to Trinket Mage for. I'm not putting Aether Vial in this deck. Gilded Drake is a good card, but I, I only have one bounce spell. It's kind of nice if you bounce it back. Blue Black Talisman is kind of weak. I could just take Celestial Colonnade because that card is actually busted and then open the door to Splash White. What a disappointing third pick. But I think that's better. I could just take Gilded Drake, but I don't actually think this is even a deck that I'm really that happy with Gilded Drake in, so... All right, now there's two great cards for me. My Just my luck. I love Polluted Delta, but I'm going to take Memory Lapse. The two mana counters are pretty busted, and I, I already have Xander's Lounge. I feel like I have a little time to pick up some fixing, so take Memory Lapse. Now it's a Braid versus Spire Bluff versus Jace versus Force Spike. I could also take Zealous Conscript, so I don't think I'm going to do that. I don't feel like I need a Braid too much. I have Prismari and Fiery Confluence. I'm just going to take Spire Bluff Canal. Here, here's where I'll take the land over the spell. And then now I guess I could just take Raugren Triumph because that leaves me now with three white sources. And then, I mean, splashing white's going to be pretty easy over Creeping Tar Pit and Breeding Pool. Yeah, that seems fine. Wow, that's a late Flash and a late Underground Sea. I could take Flash just in case. I could also take Underground Sea as it turns out for this Fallen Shinobi, or I could just take Burst Lightning or Flame Tongue Kavu, probably Burst Lightning. On the other hand, Flash is busted. I'm just going to take Flash because even, it, I don't really want to pass it, and maybe I'll end up playing it, who knows. Taiga for a Green Splash? Let's just take Thirst for Discovery. This deck could play that. And there's Days and Torsten. So Torsten, if I flash it in, draws me a bunch of lands and creatures, and then puts seven one ones into play. Whereas Daze is just an excellent card in the Hole Breacher, Lelia, Raghavan deck. I'm just going to take Daze. I took Flash as a, somewhat of a hate draft because I just didn't really think 
it was that big of a loss to, to, to pass up on Burst Lightning. But I think that uh, Memory Lapse, Days, Counterspell, plus Cheap Creatures is just good enough that maybe I'll play Flash, but I don't really need to do too much in that direction. All right. Uh, not playing any of these cards, so what do I most likely want to hate from Isaac? I feel like I didn't get past much green, so let's just take Guy's Cradle. I guess I could take Scrubland in case I have like some weird double splash deck, but right now, I can't believe I had third pick a Celestial Colony or second pick. It's unbelievable. But, uh, well, the Rao Grand Triumph is going to make it in either way. So I have two two tapped blue red lands and then an untapped one and a Shell Dock. I really don't need more tapped lands. Look, the Gilded Drake wield anyway, and I'll probably take it. I feel like this deck could could potentially use it, at the very least, as a sideboard card. And I don't think passing on this is that big of a deal. Gigantha, I can't play because of Counterspell and Fiery Confluence. I guess I'll just take Embress Shieldbreaker. Seems like a fine card for this deck. Same with Cast Into the Fire as a sideboard card. I guess Indatha Triumph is just a hate draft. All right. I mean, this deck's totally solid. It needs, it doesn't have any busted stuff. A draw seven would be nice. Oh, that was a late, a late flame tongue wheel. I actually don't mind that at all. All right. Well, let's, let's get a little power. This deck needs a little bit of, of juice. I don't mean literally power, but also literally power would be nice. Okay. Well, I'm not going to take the Jace or Teferi here. I'm actually going to take swords. Swords, I think is just broken. And I have three white sources plus a treasure off Prismari command. Or maybe even Treasures off Hole Breacher. So I think Swords to Plowshares is too good to pass up. There's also Woodfall Primus for Flash. If it wheels, then maybe I'll consider going that direction. But I kind of like just the tempo strategy here. And we need to pick up a bunch of playables, though. If I need to play some of these stuff, I don't mind. Uh, I've got a lot of cheap counters, so now I think Mystic Confluence is the pick. Passing up on Miscalc and, I guess, Reprieve, I would consider. Passing it in Tomb as well, but that's okay. So, would still like a draw seven for this whole Breacher, but I don't know if I'm going to get one at this point, especially now that Isaac knows that he passed it. So there's a Tefer Teferi's Puzzle Box, which is busted with whole Breacher. So what happens is, you go end of turn... Whole Breacher, untap, play Puzzle Box, go. They have to have instant speed removal because if they don't, on their draw step, they put their hand on the bottom and then you get like four treasures and they don't and they have no cards in hand. They never draw another card. That said, I'm going to take Fable of the Mirror Breaker because this card's just way too good. Puzzle Box probably won't wheel. Um, I do like Wooded Foothills and Chromatic Star, but I'll just take the Fable of the Mirror Breaker here. This deck's eminently fair. Could use one fetch land, though I don't think we're that likely to get one. I guess we could. We just passed a wooded foothill, so maybe there's another red fetch in the making. Uh, don't don't love not being able to take brain freeze, but we're we're a rabble master crew at this point. Stomping ground doesn't do much for me. Neither does Deceiver Exarch. So yeah, rabble master it is, and. Here goes a black red land, but I don't think I want that. A Teferi, which actually looks kind of nice here with all these counters. There's got Crater Maker and P and here on the Lar, but yeah, I'll just take Teferi over City of Brass as well. All right, we're not getting any draw sevens. We're just going to have to play Hole Breacher on the fair, and it's just going to be a good card. We're, we're on three two mana counters, two confluences. Swords to Plowshares, a decent amount of interaction even out of our creatures with like Venser, Flame Tongue, and Breath Shield Breaker. Not sure on this Dragon's Rage Channeler, but we'll see. And here we've got Lotus Field that doesn't do anything, though it is a combo with Teferi. Uh, there's Pestermite, Goblin Guide. Oh, this looks like a great Magda deck. Turn two Magda, turn three attack, counter your spell, game over. And now we're at 20 cards here, so we just need a couple more playables. Hmm. I do like Fire Covenant and Colagon's Command, and I have a Xander's Lounge, and that's it. I'm not playing in Dotha Triumph for the double splash. That said, Isochron Scepter is interesting. So it's two mana. You imprint an instant that costs two or less, and you can pay two tap and cast that. Isochron Swords is good. Isochron Lapse is good. Isochron Counterspell is good. 
Scrum Days is not. Three cards. I don't know if that's better than just putting Fire Covenant in my deck. This looks like a pretty sick Fire Covenant deck. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll take it. Maybe I won't play it. Oh, there's an Oliphant that gets all my colors. Yeah, that, that's I'm in for that. Really late channel. Wow. And now Woodfall Primus is back. So I could take Primus for Flash. And I could also flash in Fencer or Flame Tongue. It's not like the strongest. It's that or take like a Char, which I think Char would be good in this deck. But Flash is really busted. All right, let's take the Flash Primus. And we've got some ways to discard it if we if we don't end up doing that. All right, I guess I'll take Spell Queller here. This looks like a pretty good Spell Queller deck. Though actually, this might be a better Leyline Binding deck. I have the Xander's Lounge that I'm going to play, so it's going to cost two or three mana. All right, let's let's do that, actually. I think Spell Queller is just okay. And Leyline Binding as another removal spell seems like it solves some of this deck's problems. Okay, I don't think I want Seething Song. Dungeoneer's Pack, three mana, ETB's tapped, two tap, sack it. You take the initiative, gain three life, draw a card, and make a treasure. This actually does seem like a decent Dungeoneer's Pack deck. But it could also just be a decent Scrapwork Mutt deck. I don't think I want Lava Claw Reaches. All right, I'll take the Dungeoneer's Pack. I don't really know what I'm going to do with that. It's actually, I actually might play Fire Blast. Mm. P and Karen Nalar is also not crazy. And I suppose I'll just take a last pick, Pestermite, because why not? I don't care about Contagion too much. All right. Uh, so this is... Basically, I'm running Flash as a one-card, as a two-card combo. But the upside is it's really broken when you do it. Uh, we'll do Flash Beats. So I do like the blue-red tempo aspect of the deck. I obviously wish it had a piece of power. It feels like there was like a couple early packs where we would have been really nice to pick up even just like a lightning bolt, but you know, we didn't we didn't quite get there. Uh, I'm not playing intruder alarm, so I don't care about that. I guess intruder alarm plus this is kind of funny. <laughs> you make a token, you pay one on top it. So this this right now is 16 land plus Oliphant, so 17 land. So that is decent. I technically don't have to counter or cut any of those cards. I actually think Dragon's Rage Channel is probably fine here. I've got like two enchantments. I've got a Planeswalker, instant sorceries, creatures. Solid. No draw sevens, huh? That That is a shame. Would I play Fire Blast in this deck is kind of the question. I think there's a chance... I do like Fire Covenant and Fallen Shinobi, but I don't really like having no uh, no no black fixing besides one Xander's Lounge and one Oliphant. Though I guess I get treasures off Raghavan, Magda, Prismari Command, Hole Breacher, and Fable. That's kind of a lot. I could I could actually run it, but then I'd have to cut a couple of cards, right? Because so. Uh, what would I be cutting at that point, I guess, is the question. Embreath Shieldbreaker seems cuttable. I have a lot of artifact removal. And Dragon's Rage Channeler is also cuttable, though that then makes the Fallen Shinobi weaker. So I'm not loving that. Maybe I just don't mess with the colors here and, and do this. And then, because then I... I think I have a pretty good mana set up. I, I'll, I'll have the Oliphant in order to get really any color I want, even though it is double tapped effectively. Okay, so right now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve blue. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, so definitely need at least another red and at least one less blue. The question is, do we need a plan? So have one, two, three, basically four white sources. Um, plus all the treasures. On the other hand, if I play Dungeoneer's pack, 
Maybe an engineer's pack is good enough. Cut the Embrace Shield Breaker, and then I want one planes because I have initiative. Because this is nine red sources, right? Three, five, six, seven, eight, nine red sources. That's not bad. And ten blue. One, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven blue. Hmm. Maybe instead of nine and eleven, I just want ten and ten. I kind of, I kind of buy that. And then that leaves enough white. And then I'm playing Primus Flash. The other thing though is flash, the way this card works is you can pay the cost. I can flash in flame tongue with four mana. If I cast flash, put flame tongue into play and then pay the additional two, the flame tongue does stick around and that's just an instant speed flame tongue, which is kind of nice. I, I, that That is actually the main combo, I guess, because all the other creatures have flash or you don't really want to cast them instant speed. All right, I, I, I like this. I think this is what I'm going to go with. All right, let's take a look at what the squad's bringing. Ooh, Mandrill Man's got Black Lotus, Mox Jet, Luris, Comet. Good red-white aggro deck. I like that, with Lotus especially. Frogerto has a green-red deck, Splash Black, like a Jun deck, Splash Mana Drain, but like tons of fetches, like Verdant, Wooded Foothills, Breeding Pool, Blood Crypt, Storming Ground. So actually good mana with Minsk and Boo, Ancestral Recall, Mana Drain, so if the mana works out, I think this is going to be deck, deck's going to be pretty good. It has birds and lotus cobra and sylvan caryatid. I think this is going to work out nicely. And then Jabro's on blue black reanimator with soul ring, shieldred, grave titan, mind twist. All right, not bad, not bad. I'm playing round one here against Isaac, and I'm on the play with a one lander. Cool. I will mulligan that. All right, this hand is great. I'm going to keep it and. I guess put back Venser as my weakest card, I think, because I'm going to go turn two, Counterspell, turn three, Lelia or Hole Breacher, depending on what's what. And we'll see. Oh, Fairy Mastermind is a nice one, because that, oh, I do have a combo with Hole Breacher. Fairy Mastermind, Hole Breacher is pretty good. All right, let's go into turn Fairy. Land. I'm just going to... Send, and I think I'm just going to play Fable. Ooh, we're getting, we're getting Bowmaster. No, 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 that's too good. I, I can't let that happen, I'm afraid. Oh, that was a pretty big mistake. Isaac didn't play that end of turn and uh, got very punished for that. I didn't have an answer to Bowmaster, so killing that seemed pretty nice. All right, Chrome Host Seed Shark. Let's go... Let's actually go Lelia, because it'll be a 3-3 this turn. Really hope to hit a land here. That'd be so good. Xander's Lounge. Oh, Sheldock Isle, even better. Amazing. All right, well, what a good play by me. Really smart. All right, play Sheldock. A weak Sheldock, I guess I'm going to put Magda under it. And it triggers Lelia, so Lelia is now a 4-4. Okay, so if Isaac has a way to kill Lelia, then uh, that would be unfortunate. But if not, we're going to get to attack as a 5-5 next turn, which is big enough to attack into these two things. Oh, this looks like a... Oh, Tinker. Okay, well, that could be really bad then. Let's see what it is. Portal would be really bad news for me. Blightsteel. Sadly, I put the Venser on the bottom. Hmm. Need to find something. Um... I guess I'm going to attack with Lelia, because if I find Mystic Confluence or Teferi... Oh, there's Teferi. <laughs> All right, well, I guess I should have played my land first, actually, in case I hit Mystic Confluence, but hitting Teferi here, we, we, we take those. It's a lot better than losing, even if I did have to lose my Lelia as part of it. Oh, you're just attacking with the shark. You're not attacking with the thing. Huh, interesting. Would I rather have a Fairy Mastermind or a Teferi for one more turn? Um, I think I'd rather just have a Fairy Mastermind, because the Fairy mastermind whole breacher combo I think is pretty strong. It also, having Fairy Mastermind in play means that um, Isaac can't cast a cantrip here without getting punished. So I think I'll get more cards out of Fairy Mastermind. If if it was just, will, will Teferi live if I let it live this turn? because I had another way to kill the Seed Shark, that's a completely different story. But given the circumstances, I think just letting Teferi go is for the best. 
And what do we got? Tezzeret the Seeker, interesting. So you can mine, plus one it to untap two artifacts. You can minus X it to search for an artifact with cost equal X. And you can minus five it to make all your artifacts five fives. Well, that just seems okay. Like if you plus one it, I can attack it with Fairy Mastermind. I also next turn, I'm, I'm hoping to draw a land so I can go Fable with Whole Breacher plus Memory Lapse up. But we'll see. If I don't draw a land, I'm probably still playing Fable. I think I need to get start getting a little more ahead. So we're minus one in Tez. Do we have a Soul Ring to go get? That would be sick here. We have a Sensei's Top. Eh, okay. I don't mind that so much. Oh, Flame Tongue. All right. Well, Flame Tongue's pretty nice. Let's attack Tezzeret here. And then I think I just have to Flame Tongue the Seed Shark while the getting's good. Don't really want more Seed Shark incubator tokens popping out. Do get to make a 5 5 thanks to that Tezzeret. So this kind of let a 5-5 five, five hit the board. You can also plus one Tezzeret to untap the Talisman here. But Fairy Mastermind probably kills the Tezzeret. And then Flame Tongue can kind of race the 5-5 five, five maybe. I guess if Isaac goes like animate both my tokens attack, I'll block Flame Tongue on the 3-3. Three, three. I'll take 5 down to 15. I'll kill Tezzeret and then I'll play a Fable, I guess. But we'll see. This is, this is a close game. Would have lost really badly if I think the Bowmasters had gone the other way. Oh, Emery. Okay. What are we milling here? Milling a currency converter and a sword of the meek. Unfortunately, I don't have an answer to Emery, but I do have a whole breacher, which could make converter a bit worse here. We're spinning the top again. I don't mind that. It's a fresh three cards because uh, Emery milled the rest. If you tap to top the draw a card, I get to draw a card off Fairy Mastermind, which is nice. Talisman. Oh, now you can untap both Talismans with Tezzeret. Oh, we're going to Land Cycle. We can still do that, though. Get Underground C. And we really didn't like what was on top, huh? We're spinning again. I wonder if we're looking for something in particular. Well, at this point, there's not much you can cast. You've got black, white, and green mana available from these two talismans that you can untap with Tezzeret. But now it's like animate the 5-5, five, five, attack for 5 is probably the play, and then I get to kill Tezzeret with my fairy mastermind. Unless Isaac has like a, a snuff out or something hiding in there, which certainly is possible. Oh, I get to draw a card off fairy mastermind. So you found something. Okay, Woodfall Primus actually isn't bad, because now Flash is a live draw. Oh, and we're just going to Tezzeret for one to get Sensei's top out again. Oh, okay. That's a lot of spinning wheels, huh? Well, Sea Chrome Coast is kind of bad, because I really wanted to draw uh, untapped land. Mm, I can play Magda end of turn as well. Let's just go Fable, leave up Memory Lapse, leave up Magda. <laughs> the Shell Dock is a lot less good than I was hoping, but I'm probably just going to have to cast Memory Lapse this turn. I would imagine I'm lapsing whatever this is. Urza, yeah, I am going to lapse it, though the sad part is Isaac can replay the Urza, but I do get to draw a card off Fairy Mastermind at least. And I still get to do something next turn. We'll see. Oh, there's Flash. Okay. Flash is interesting. So now you have Urza plus three mana. So this is non-creature permanent. So if you don't animate the incubator token right now, I guess you get to play this for free. Okay. Okay. But I kind of want the incubator to not get animated yet. Let's see. Let's draw. 
I will use the Fable, discard Mountain. I don't want to discard a Hole Breacher. I think Hole Breacher is going to be pretty good. Hit 12, huh? Um, I'm going to attack with everything and see what is up here. Block. All right. Take four, and then now, I guess, how do I want to do this? I guess I just need to do this flash now, because I could wait and pass end of turn, but I feel like that's just too risky, because I don't get to kill that incubator. But I do get to kill the currency converter, I guess. Or maybe that's better. Yeah, I guess the currency converter taps for mana. I think I kill currency converter over killing. I could just kill two lands. No. Let's kill the incubator. And we'll kill. Uh, I'll maybe a land. I have to. Oh, I guess I have to kill two artifacts, and I'll kill the currency converter because I need the construct token to die here. I could have waited to try to kill that construct in response, but if Isaac just takes the the pass and just lets this happen, oh, I killed the wrong one. I was not supposed to kill either of those things, right? Because that would have killed that token. I was supposed to kill the, the talisman. I kind of like got through it all and then overthought myself. All right, well I'll just pass then. But that was certainly not the way to way to do it. I do have a Woodfall Primus in play, which isn't bad. I just need to find a Mystic Confluence or something. Mystic Forge, okay. That is that is okay. Since his top. Oh, okay, well, I'll draw, and instead of drawing, I'm going to get to play this. So you don't draw the card, and then you put top on top. So you can play top, but it doesn't really do anything to do that. And I still have Magda ready to go if I need it to. Yes, I should have killed the talisman and then this construct token. For some reason, I was like, oh, the untapped, can't do the untapped one. But it's okay. Hopefully, we can recover from that. That was a, definitely a case of like going very far down the rabbit hole to try to figure out like the right play. Mo not killing the 5-5 the five five because of that and then settling for killing the 3-3 three three when it's like, it's not a tap ability. So it's like, I don't know, almost like an IRL misclick where it's like, yeah, I kind of figured it out, and then for some reason just made the wrong play anyway. But, okay. So this stops you from drawing the second card, so I don't get a card off uh, Fairy Mastermind, but I do get to stop Isaac from drawing his whole deck. Okay, he gets to spin the top. Can attack with the construct token. I also have six points of damage in the air, which is something he has to worry about. And he doesn't have that many blockers left. So he kind of I mean he could attack for seven, but it's kind of risky to do that. End of turn, I'm gonna put a Mogda into play. Let's see, so you have five blockers and I have four ground attackers, so it's not really gonna to help to do too much, but let's do this. Sadly, not that interesting. All right, and let's just draw a Mystic or Fiery Confluence to end the game. Nope. Um, I don't think... So I'm going to play a land. I think I'm just going to animate the Colonnade. And then attack in the air for six here. And I don't think I need to tap a Magda to attack or anything like that. And I think I'll pass with three mana up, which isn't enough to do anything really. But I can cycle Xander's Lounge. Okay, you get to draw. You're at two facing down. 
a hole breacher and two flyers. So you can spin tops, but you can't do too much else. So what does this do? Minus two, minus two, the hole breacher. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't do anything about that. Okay. So I guess I'm probably going to need to find a counter spell here. If I because I get to draw a card off Fairy Mastermind. Counterspell? Ooh. And there's Battlefield tapped. Not great. Sahili, okay. So you can tap top to draw a card, make a token, and that pays for the top. So Isaac gets to basically draw his deck. Sort of the Meek even comes back, but it's no way to sack it, so that's not that bad. Still has to deal with these flyers, but we'll see if uh, we'll see if this how this works out. I I feel like I'm probably gonna lose still. Dang, he had the, a way to kill Hole Reacher, unfortunately. Okay, you got your Sensei's top. You got stuff. I don't know if it would have mattered not killing the Construct. He still would have been able to go off this turn. Obviously, that was not ideal, but... So, this this basically does let him draw his deck, but it's not clear that that's going to end up with a win. Obviously, there's a lot of ways it could. I, I could believe it, but... For right now, we'll have to just see, I guess. Mm-hmm. Do you have a brain freeze? Do you have like a cryptic command would do it? At some point, no, I don't think days is very likely to, to, to matter here. Well, Embreath Shieldbreaker is certainly coming in. I do think Woodfall Primus is still pretty good here in this matchup with Flash. And it's got 12 cards left. I mean, I don't know. You, you you do have to have some answers here because you can attack with a construct, and I'll just chump it with like a Magda or something, or or Woodfall Primus, whatever it is. Okay, here's three mana, four mana. Kurt Clan Ironworks. Okay, so <laughs> now this is infinite mana. Because, or at least you can draw your whole deck full of mana because every time you play top, you get a 1 1. You get a. And the Sword of the Meat comes back, so you can sack the sword, you can sack the token. A new token comes in. Yeah, you got infinite mana. And. Or near infinite mana, I guess. Doctor Foundry. Oh, now, now that's death. All right. So I wouldn't have won even without the. Killing the extra 5 5, and we weren't getting close. All right, well, down a game. This looks like a pretty disgusting Urza deck. Hopefully we can be a little bit faster next game. Uh, definitely want Embereth, Shieldbreaker, and Cast into the Fire. Dungeoneer's Pack can probably go, because that card is probably just bad. Yeah, Flame Tongue seems good. Mogda, I still think, think seems fine. Oh, I can just cut Dragon's Rage Channeler. That's easy. Gilded Drake, hmm, Peter and Karen Lara, no. All right. I'm ready to roll here. I've got a lot of artifact removal, so I don't feel like this this has to be too bad of a matchup, but I've got a mulligan this hand. And I guess I'll keep this and put swords to plowshares back. All right, I don't love this hand, but if I draw a blue source on turn two and I can go turn two counterspell into turn three rabble master, I'll be happy with that. I also have cast into the fire up, I guess, so. I have Daze or Cast Into the Fire into Rabble Master, and if I can avoid using Daze this turn, which, ooh, looks like he's thinking about topping upkeep, Rabble Master with Daze up is pretty nice. Now I'm just a blue source away from having a counter spell, and this is a pretty fast hand. Like the, I do have a deck that mulligans pretty well. I, I feel like it plays pretty well l low resource games. Oh, Lelia. Uh, yeah, I'd actually rather get a Lelia into play. I think Lelia is... A little bit better just because she grows immediately though there's not much i can i don't think i have any zeros in my deck so i knew i wasn't going to play something this turn but both Lelia and rabble master grow the thing is i want Lelia in play to hit a land drop next turn 
or to have Lelia attack and be able to play a spell off the top would also be pretty nice. So I'm going to try my best here. All right. Take three. Days is going to be pretty nice here. I, I like all the cards in my hand. This was a pretty good mulligan. Doctor Foundry. Okay. That one's not so bad. Emery. Uh, that I actually will daze. Emery, I don't think, is a card I want resolving here. And then take my turn. And I think I'm just going to play Rabble Master and just send in the clowns. Maybe I don't get to play a land. Yeah, I don't get to play Ragrin Triumph, but I'd rather just have Rabble Master in play. And then next turn I can cast into the fire. Assuming Isaac even has sword. Hopefully this isn't Urza this turn. Okay, that's a talisman. That is not a sword of the meek. And that's a chrome host seed shark. All right, that's actually not bad at all, really. Now I will keep a land in hand, because if I hit a blue land, I think I just win. See, Rabble Master is now a 4-4 because I attacked last turn. All right, planes. Honestly, planes is still a totally fine draw here. You kind of have to block Rabble Master. I mean, I guess you could take 10 going to 1, but that seems inadvisable. All right, play a planes. And now I've got Leyline Binding up as well. So I feel like I'm going to do a pretty well at stopping whatever Isaac's play is this turn. And we didn't need to get a beatdown draw. Lelia into Days into Rabble Master upkeep. So we're playing Sahili, I guess. That's why we're upkeep topping. Um, sure, Sahili's fine, I guess. Uh, sure, let's go Leyline Binding in response. Get the Sahili off the board. So you can't you can't get a second token. And pass, draw, blue land would still be pretty good here. Uh, let's just attack. And if Isaac sacks something to the Thopter Foundry, then I get to before blockers cast into the fire. So I guess you sack top or talisman here. Unless you're just going to block Lelia, in which case... You just block Lelia and go to two, and that's fine with me. But if you wanna, if you wanna make a token first, then I'll kill both tokens. I feel like killing just one token doesn't really do anything. So <laughs> it's funny. Isaac doesn't know that he's gonna die immediately if he if he tries to make a token. All right, well, that's fine. Play my island pass. I have counterspell up. I feel like I'm pretty good here. Um, I think now, though, now that you're tapped out, I am actually going to exile the Thopter Foundry. And and then I have a counterspell up for whatever comes next. But exiling the Thopter Foundry removes a bunch of potential blockers from the field. So let's just yoink that thing. When you don't have mana up. And then I have counterspell up. And also, one thing won't even necessarily save you. Uh, memory jar. I guess I'm going to counterspell the memory jar. There's just no reason to have that draw into a million things. All right. Going to game three. His deck, his deck is very good, but I don't think it needs like mana ball and stuff too. But I have a ton of decent disruption, right? I've got the Woodfall Primus Flash thing, Embrace Shield Breaker, Cast on the Fire, Prismari Command, Fiery Confluence. I have a lot of ways to blow up artifacts. Not that one for one blowing up artifacts isn't even necessarily like amazing, but I think it is good here. Oh, he's got a Colossus. I've got to put in Gilded Drake. I do have swords as well, but I think I might take out Thirst for Discovery. This this looks like a, a fast a fast matchup here. And I don't know how much time I have for that. All right, let's put in the Gilded Drake, and I think that's good. I don't think I want to try putting in Fallen Shinobi and Fire Covenant. I'll just have to 
draw a good mix of answers, since I do have some good ones here. I also have a lot of creatures that left unchecked will win the game, like Rabble Master, Lelia, Fable are all like, by themselves this can win if you just play this and then disrupt their next play. Uh, yeah, I think this is actually a keep. It's turn three Rabble Master with like Gilded Drake and Leyline Binding. I don't know, because the, the Oliphant can go get Raugrin Trium. This deck's kind of slow, this, but... So I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know that I can mulligan a hand just because the hand is like a little bit slow. I guess if I don't draw a land, I suppose this hand does kind of go wrong. But hopefully I draw one. All right. Well, I drew one. Oh, that's interesting. So now that I've drawn planes, this planes is actually one of the lands that would most make me want to change plans here. Mm-hmm. Oh, is this Tinker? Oh, Chrome Host Seed Shark. Um, I think I'm just gonna get a mountain, actually. I have uh, I have all three of my colors. So I'm missing double blue, but now what I get to do is I get to go turn two Gilded Drake and take the Chrome Host Seed Shark. And then the Chrome Host Seed Shark blocks the Gilded Drake, so it's not even like I'm getting behind. And Leyline Binding and Teferi are pretty nice with Chromeho Seed Shark, plus it denies him the Seed Shark, which is a pretty big game. Okay. No Urza, please. Oh, Tinker. Well, I, I kind of wish I, I could have Chrome hosted the, or uh, Gilded Drake the Blightsteel, but I'm going to get to Leyline Binding it. So I feel like that's probably good enough. Oh, you get to make it unblockable too. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to take the risk. I think I'm just going to cast Leyline Binding here and uh, <laughs> get the Colossus now. I, I look, there, there's a bit of a temptation to to wait and let him use the Manifold key, but I, I feel like that's just asking for trouble. Especially since he's got one card in hand. He's not really winning this game right now. All right, I'm just going to go land, tapped... Yeah, I'll play this one. Pass the turn with Hole Breacher up in case you do something. And then end of turn, Hole Breacher. Oh, what do we got? Is this a memory jar? It's a five drop. Hmm. I wonder. Yeah. Oh, Lorien revealed. Oh. oh, I'm sorry, friend. That is game. <laughs> yeah, this game's over now. Let's just say Hole Breacher is Hole Breacher. Isaac absolutely had to cast that, but it's not working out great. All right, let's go to Fairy. I would like my Gilded Drake back, please. And let's animate the Incubator token from the Leyline Binding, play Spire Bluff Canal, send for 11, and good luck. <laughs> uh, all right. Mystic Forge, ooh, if you hit top, cast top, cast a zero drop. Nope, that'll do it. And uh, Hole Breacher plus Gilded Drake, me answer your stuff draw, but we take those and we are one and oh. Alrighty, and I noticed my webcam froze, so we're back. Uh, time for round two, playing against JJ. I am on the play. I will keep this hand. Obviously, I would like to draw Primus at this point, but you know. And Juju Bean is up to red white aggro, so this is a pretty solid start. I would have probably I would have kept his hand against anyone, but having swords and flame tongue against red white seems like a decent place to be. Mm, I think I'll just play the Xander's Lounge and play the Dragon's Rage here. I don't think I I think it would be a mistake here to not play Xander's Lounge with the hope of cycling it later. I feel like I feel like that's not really necessary. Do I want to upkeep swords? No, I guess not. I was going to save upkeep swords something so I can get the scry off Dragon's Rage Channeler, but ooh, really didn't need to do that because we drew maybe the best card we could have drawn. Like, it's comparable with l drawing Lelia there or Rabble Master. Better to Rabble Master, I think. I don't know. If he has an answer, Lelia would have been better. If he doesn't have an answer, or sorry, if he had an answer, I'd rather draw Fable than Lelia. 
But against not an answer, I guess Laylee is a little bit better. They're both crazy good, though. I mean, just getting to go Fable into Flame Tongue is already great. Let's see. Hopefully, he doesn't have like. Like, I guess if he has Skyclave Apparition, he can kill the Fable. And that's just okay. Oh, Loran, kill the Fable. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. I would have liked to get to draw, to discard and draw two. Um. Guess I'll just go Flame Tongue here so I can attack with my Goblin Shaman. And you take it, and then I've got Swords up and Sheldock coming next turn. And hope, I mean, Lauren was one of the better answers. That traded for the Fable, and I had to use Flame Tongue on it. I was ho hoping it would have been either or, you either you kill Fable or you play something I can Flame Tongue. But I still like my position here. Would have been nice to get some loots in to make it a little bit more likely that uh, the Sheldock pops off sooner. But I guess he's at 27 cards because of the two fetches. And I'm at 30, but I also have a bunch of card draw in my deck. I basically have, well, not the literal initiative because that's a mechanic and magic that's in the cube. <laughs> but I do have the initiative. I'm on the board. I have two threats on board and five mana. Oh, Urza Saga is good, but a little slow. It'll depend what the play is alongside it, I suppose. Giver of Runes, okay. And Rampaging Ferocity. All right. But I, I'm going to get the first attack here. Oh, wow. And I drew that. All right, well, that's just disgusting. So let's go Swords to Plowshares, the Ferocidon. Attack you for six, and then we're going to... Woodfall Primus, your Plateau, and your Urza Saga. <laughs> oh, that's pretty nice. Flash, Woodfall Primus, Persist, Blow Up Urza Saga, Blow Up Plateau, and then you're at 13, and oh, we're not done yet. Sheldock Isle is my last card with an Oliphant under it. Yes. <laughs> a lot better than a mountain there, huh? Oliphant. Not that I think that we're going to get to that point. Yeah. Oh, that was a picture perfect. Just removal, removal into the flash uh, Woodfall Primus. Excellent. Pia and Kiran Nalar is usually pretty good against those kinds of decks. Dungeoneer's Pack is just, I don't know. It coming into play tapped makes me feel like this card's probably just terrible, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I'll decide it out every game. We'll see. We'll see, though. <laughs> uh, do I want Cast into the Fire against Urza Saga or Embrace Shieldbreaker? I don't really like that as a way to fight them. And I have a bunch of other removal. I mean, the worst card in my deck is probably Hole Breacher. I guess I can combine it with Prismari Command or Fairy Mastermind, but that's not even that good. So with Fairy Mastermind, Hole Breacher, you get to spend four mana to draw a card to make a treasure, and then they don't, and then they do nothing. Yeah, that's okay. It's, it's obviously fine. Oh well, look at this hand. This is just Modern Murktide. <laughs> it's got every everything except Fiery Confluence is just straight up Modern Murktide here. Which is a good sign. And he had no one drop. I like that too. Oh, <laughs> into Fable. <laughs> I'm just going to play Raghavan turn one. If he doesn't have a two mana play, then you just win the game. Also, if he has a blocker. Oh, I guess I, d I, I don't get the treasure yet. I was thinking I could Prismari Command, but I'm, I'm a little short on that. I was thinking it was like when Raghavan attacks, he gets the treasure. Of course, that's not how it works. I played with Raghavan a lot, but the Fable tricked me. If I draw a blue source here, it could be good. Obviously, it's going to matter a lot what his play is here. I'm not really expecting Raghavan to, to get through, but... Oh, Thalia. Interesting. Um, let's just go Dragon's Rage Channeler Celestial Colonnade then. Thalia is kind of annoying. It's going to make it so I can't cast any of my, the spells in my hand. But if I do... I guess I do get to go... Mountain have up counter spell, and then if I draw another land and can cast Prismari Command, all of a sudden I'm, I'm doing great. Selfless Spirit is good, but all right, let's go. Mountain, go. Thalia stopping me from casting Prismari Command or Fable. He didn't play a land there, by the way. And JJ had to decide between Plateau and Swamp. Chose Swamp. Maybe has red cards in hand that he can't play. Um, Retrofitter Foundry, okay. 
that I think is okay because, oh, that's a good land to get. Because even though I don't get to use Counterspell this turn, I'm probably going to go Prismari Command. Hmm. Or I could play Fable. It's not like you're going to use Retrofitter next turn anyway. Let's just cast Fable here. And we get a Scry off the dead. Oh, yeah, we'll keep Flame Tongue on top. I don't know that I'm going to use it next turn, but I will certainly consider it. If JJ wants to get value out of the Urza Saga, he kind of has to just pass with Saga mana up. Okay, Loran to kill the Fable, sure. And then now... Yeah, Dahlia is really crimping my style. Okay. Draw Flame Tongue. So next turn. Let's just go Flame Tongue Kavu. I'm going to kill the Thalia, I guess. And you're going to sack Selfless Spirit. You have to. I mean, I guess you don't technically have to, but it would be incredibly wild not to. All right. And those are indestructible, so I'll pass. And then now Saga triggers, and I kind of hope he just makes a token because I have destroy a bunch of artifacts in play, and I'm just going to cast Fiery Confluence and blow up a bunch of artifacts I wish I could deal one to everything. Oh, we got Chromatic Star. That's not ideal. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe I do something a little different here. Oh, I do swords too. Okay. Uh, what if? He's got no mana. Swords Thalia. Prismari Command. Destroy target artifact on construct. Deal two damage to... Giver of Runes, attack with everything, blocks Raghavan, takes seven. I don't get to have Counterspell up, unfortunately, because the Thalia makes me spend two on swords. But this puts me in a ridiculously good position. All right. Um, actually, hold on. What if I just, if I blow up those two... Is there no? There's no world where I don't swords. All right, so let's just go. Prismari command. Deal two, destroy target artifact. Deals two to Thalia, destroy target artifact. And I get to surveil a land into my graveyard. Wouldn't mind that. Hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Because the other thing is, uh, now, and I swords Lauren, I think. And then Memory Lapse, huh? Uh, yeah. Memory Lapse is still probably pretty good, especially since I can't really lose here. You can block the uh, Dragon's Rage Channeler, I guess, and then I get to Raghavan. Which means I have a counterspell up, which is pretty huge. Because now I can counterspell whatever the next play is here. And then Fiery Confluence down and everything, anything I need to. This deck has played really out really nicely. This is a, a nice little dub here. And counterspell this. Yep. And then I have Memory Lapse up for next turn. And... Can block Raghavan this turn, but I'm fine with that. I, I even have this Fiery Confluence I don't really need here. And we're ready to roll. I even have a Celestial Colonnade up at some point. Oh, wow. We're sending. Interesting. All right. Well, I, it didn't really matter too much. I guess JJ needed the, the Giver of Runes in play for some reason, which is totally fine. We'll see what we get, but it doesn't matter because we're going to have Fiery Confluence to finish things off. Didn't need any spell to win, but one nonetheless. And we 
a nice little 2-0 start here. Let's get to round three. Alrighty, time for round three. Playing against Mac on Blue Black Reanimator, who's mulliganing. This hand's a little slow on the draw, but turn two Magda, turn three <laughs> Dungeoneer's Pack <laughs> is a thing. All right, oh, Sheldock's not a bad turn one. Let's put, yeah, let's put Teferi under the Sheldock. And then I get to go turn two Magda, turn three, either have Prismari Command or uh, Dungeoneer's Pack. Oh man, Flash is on the bottom. Unfortunately, I do know that. And I don't really think I have much of a way to shuffle, so we'll see what we do. Oh, I guess Dungeoneer's Pack shuffles. All right, don't discard something giant, please. I feel like if I get to untap here, I could be okay. If we're just reanimating on turn three here, though, it's going to be a problem. It makes a 7-7 seven, seven reach and a 4-4. Four, four. All right. Oh, Toxic Deluge for one. Fine with that. Um, let's just do this and say go. I could play Dungeoneer's Pack there, but I kind of want to keep up counters plus Prismari Command. Max down to three cards in hand. Jace the Mind Sculptor. Well, I don't really like that. So let's go Memory Lapse on Jace. Draw. Well, now, now is the time, I guess. I play Dungeoneer's Pack and play Spire Bluff. And then he can play Jace. And then I can get the initiative. And we'll see what else we do. I get a treasure and a card out of the deal. That's not bad. I'm a little worried that next turn he's going to reanimate something. I don't have Mystic Confluence up. Hmm. I could play a land and pass with with Mystic Confluence up. I think that's better than than using the Dungeoneer's pack. You can only use it as a sorcery, so I'm costing myself a lot by passing here. But Mystic Confluence to stop Titan if he if he goes to reanimate seems pretty good. Also, if I can find Hole Breacher here, I do like that. So Jace, he has Brainstorm twice, so he's got a lot of cards in hand. It's going to go to five after he puts cards back here. It is helping my uh, Teferi come off the Shell Dock here. All right, Swamp Cycle to Shuffle, that's pretty good. Play Swamp, just tap out for something. No, no plays. Um... I'm just going to draw three cards. It's fine. If you counter it, you counter it. Urtai, sure. That is totally fine. I still get to draw a card even. Ooh, Dragon's Rage Channeler. Um, Let's go get the initiative. Get an island, I guess. Dragon's Rage Channeler. Play a land. Um, oh, I actually probably wanted to do that a different way. Well, it's fine. I'll deal two damage to any target. Target player creates a treasure. So let's deal two damage to you, and I'll make a treasure. I should have basically. I should have uh, tapped, played a mountain, so I could do that. Days on the in my graveyard. I don't think I want days anymore. It's going to end up probably the same place because there's a good chance I just cast Counterspell this turn anyway, but I technically should have a land tapped and two treasures untapped. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm getting close to Teferi. And next turn, Teferi could be pretty good. I'm hoping Mac doesn't have two good plays this turn. Hopefully just one. I do have the initiative. I'm going to get to kill Jace next turn, assuming it all kind of goes according to plan. All right, well, I'm going to have to counter. Oh, I'm not going to counter that. That's fine. Hopefully he's just tapping out for something gigantic. Oh, I'm going to counter that. Because it basically eliminates my counter spell. Uh, Leyline Binding, huh? It doesn't stop Turok, but... It's probably, no, I got to put it in the graveyard because of, uh, 
because of the shell dock aisle. Okay, I can't force spike. All right, well, let's hope I keep swords to plowshares. Okay. Well, mountain was really bad to keep, so I guess I'm glad I didn't keep that. And No, oh, I'm just keeping nothing. Sure. Nah, this isn't so bad. Let's go Lost Well or Forge. Uh, I think I actually do Lost Well here. Scry 2. Bottom. Fiery Confluence doesn't stop Turok. Hmm... Maybe I should have made this a 5-5. Five, five. No, I, I still got to... I think I'll put that on the bottom. Lely of the Blade Reforged. Interesting. I mean, Lelia is good. I think I'm going to draw a card off to Fairy, cast, Surveil 1, Graveyard. Let's draw... Oh, Fairy Mastermind's kind of nice. Okay, so let's go attack Jace. A Mac has no cards in hand and shuffled. All right, so let's play Lelia. The reason I'm just playing Lelia is because I'm going to get to untap my lands anyway to play Fairy Mastermind. So I think just having Lelia out, because he's kind of forced to attack to Fairy here. I mean, he's not, he doesn't have to, but I think it's probably should. Do I play Fairy Mastermind to block is kind of the question. I kind of think I do. I don't think I care about Fairy Mastermind too much. And Teferi's going to go up to six loyalty now. Archfiend of the Dross. Okay. Draw. I guess I'm going to get a treasure. Draw Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Um, yeah, all right, now I'm just gonna put Archfiend of the Dross back. Attack with these, see what we mill. Ooh, a Thirst. Yeah, we'll, we'll take that. Thirst, get it to Surveil. Oh, Flame Tongue. Yeah, we'll put that on top. All right, Basic Land. No, but I'll discard Rogavon and Rabble Master. Oh, I forgot that, uh, this makes Turok gigantic. All right, well, I guess I'll play Fable anyway. Surveil mountain to the graveyard. And pass, and I'll just chump the Turok. So I guess I should have just kept Raghavan? I'm not even sure. Next turn, I mean, I'm just gonna block this no matter who it's attacking. Oh, he just doesn't even attack. All right, let's go to the catacombs, get a four. <laughs> Do I discard? Uh, yes. Even though it's going to grow Turok, I think that's fine. <laughs> flash. Oh, that's funny. I could flash in the flame tongue. Oh, I guess I should have attacked with Teferi. Or drawn, drawn with Teferi first. All right, Lelia. Because I figure, I figure Mac's going to block the Lelia anyway. It's kind of hard to block Goblin Shaman token over Lelia, I would say. Flame tongue. Kill Turok, and then now we just have complete control of the game. We just have to make sure we don't get decked, but that's not really going to happen. Oh, and a hole breacher. Why not? Pass. Untap my lands. All right. This game ended up not being that close. It was close for a while, but the ending is not going to be very close. Okay. Dun Dungeoneer's Pack was good this game in a game where you did nothing for a long time. <laughs> so I guess there's that. Uh, I do want Gilded Drake. Yeah, I'm going to take the Dungeoneer's Pack out. What can you do, right? Mm, not much. Mm -hmm. Oh, we are destroying them. We're at 6-1 right now. So uh, everyone has just been... Me, J-Bro, and Alpha Frog are all 2-0, and, and Mandrill Man is 0-1. <laughs> all right. Um, so let's see if we can get the last game here. If Mac wants to play it out, I, I would prefer to, but well, it's up to them. I I, I, I still uh, have the uh, the policy. I, I'm not going to force any of my opponents who are dead, you know, if their team has lost to, to play things out. But Mac's a good sport. Generally, we'll want to battle here. All right. 
I would in fact like to play first, but I don't get to. I will keep this hand though. Turn two fairy mastermind is nice. I could uh, Gilded Drake to steal a reanimator. Ooh, that's pretty good. It's gonna flip. I can't do much about that. Turn one uh, suspicious stowaway can be quite strong. It's funny that in a reanimator deck, you don't even always want it flipped, but of course, you still would usually prefer that. Uh-oh. What's going on here? Turok, all right. I hit Fairy Mastermind Fable, sure. Well, at least the thing flips back. Draw. Um, it's a, he's at two cards in hand. Playing Gilded Drake doesn't do much, but otherwise I'm gonna, Max gonna get to just flip the stowaway. So I guess I just have to do this. I'm still getting attacked for four. Oh, unless you have a kill spell, I guess. So now the good thing is this does grow the Turok thanks to Suspicious Stowaway, which means that in two turns when I Fiery Confluence, hopefully that means that uh, the Turok survives and I can kill both of those. What would be my best draw here? Uh, Flash would actually just be an absurdly good draw. Sheldock Isle. I guess that's better than playing Xander's Lounge, but I still don't love it. Yeah, let's put Venser under there. I think by the time you, you're you're doing that, Venser is going to do the best for you. All right, pass the turn. And, oh, what do we got in turn? Urtai. Hmm. Kill Turok and I draw a card. Another tap land. Yeah, tap lands are coming. It's coming home to roost. All right, I take... Eight here, I'm at six. So if I draw a untapped land, I can try to stabilize with Fiery Confluence, but it's gonna be kind of unlikely that that's gonna work here. All right, land would be sick. <laughs> hmm. All right, all right, all right. Go into game three here. Ember Shieldbreaker against Mox Diamond and Mox Sapphire is not terrible. Maybe that's better than Dragon's Rage. Dragon's Rage was actually pretty good last game, though. It uh, it just was a one mana three three flyer. Got me a bunch of surveils. All right, game three on the play. If I win this, I clinch the draft. The draft is not quite over. I'm gonna keep this hand because I'm on the play. Turn one Sheldock, turn two have days up, and then turn five guaranteed confluence with all my colors, I think is okay. Yeah, once again, I'll just put Venser under the Sheldock here. Don't like putting Counterspell and Thirst on the bottom. Those are both cards I would have liked to have seen here. All right. Oh, Fairy Mastermind. Nice little draw. Okay. And if I draw any of my good three drop threats, this hand becomes awesome. Brain Maggot. I guess I will cast days on that. I don't want to return a land. I definitely don't want my Mystic Confluence getting dazed. All right, that's not a three drop. I guess the good news is on turn four, I get to activate the Fairy Mastermind. <laughs> okay, Dothy Voidwalker, sure. Fairy Mastermind, draw. Uh, a little late, but still good. Still good, still good. All right, hit with the Fairy Mastermind. Past the turn. So now Jace isn't that good of a draw for him. Um, I guess Thoughtseize or something would be kind of annoying. Yeah, what are you going to do with Jace here? I guess bounce the goblin and accept. Oh, no. He had snuff out. Never mind. Jace was great for him. Wait, what's he going to play a fairy mastermind? Oh, okay. Um, that's fine, I guess. Do I want to discard to draw two? Um, yeah, I guess I should have played my planes earlier. But here we are. All right, now I'll go Rabble Master. I just feel like with Flash in hand, it would be really nice to draw uh, the Woodfall Primus. So I felt it was worth discarding the two lands. The worst case scenario was I drew no, no lands, but... 
even th then in the scenario where I don't draw lands, I still end up in a spot where I have uh, good things to play because my curve is pretty low. So I kind of feel like this is fine, but I don't know, it is close. I would like to change a card though, so it would be nice to win this game. Now lands are good. I would hope Mac doesn't have Toxic Deluge. That would be scary. The power play of Jace plus Snuff Out was pretty good. I will say that. I guess I did need to draw the Fable turn three. If I had the turn three Fable, then he would have played Void Caller and Snuffed Out. Yeah, I mean, I guess it would have just been a different game. It wouldn't have been necessarily going to win. All right, so Jace is resolving here. You go down to six cards. You're going to him me. Oh, you're going to damn my Rabble Master and then play a Rona. Okay. Land is fine here because now I go land, bounce, bounce, draw. So bounce, bounce, draw. And I get the fairy back and then I get to kill Jace. And then now I've got a great hand if, uh, if Max next turn isn't too good here. Because we've got Memory Lapse plus Mastermind, Flash if I ever draw, Woodfall Primus, Sinkhole my Sheldock. Okay. And replay Rona. Yeah, that's that's fine. I am not, not too broken up about that. All right. Um, let's just pass the turn here. I guess maybe I should have just played the Fairy Mastermind. The problem with that, though, is like you could just wait on Rona. All right. Now I'm going to do it in response, though. Yeah, I got an extra card in a low resource game like that. That is worth a lot. I could, if I had another land, I would have actually copied the Fairy Mastermind, but given the circumstances, I don't want to do that. Oh, Toxic Deluge for two. Memory Lapse it and get ready to get four spiked. Oh, I didn't get four spiked. Oh, we're gonna get, we're gonna win. I mean, we're very likely to. Um, let's see. Uh, I think I'm just going to draw two, discard two, and make a treasure. I think given my hand, it seems fine. Now I have to discard two. Maybe, do I discard to fairy? Maybe I just discard flash at this point. It's, yeah. Discard flash and Magda. I'm going to keep the two white cards because I just got a treasure. And I think I just attack for three here and pass. Oh, I guess I'm getting deluged. Oh, yeah, that, 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 I should have just attacked for more. Oh, uh, yeah, no, no, that play didn't make any sense. I, I, I just like blanked on the deluge coming because I, I mean this is still going to be fine. I'm going to play Teferi here, but I should have gone Prismari Command, and uh, I'm just going to play the Shield Breaker now. I should have played Prismari Command to kill the Rona. That's what would have, I would have missed a land drop was the main main reason not to do that. But yeah, that was that was foolish of me. I, I just was like too busy talking through what I was going to do and thinking through my stuff without really factoring in that he was going to replay Toxic Deluge next turn. <laughs> Am I getting hemmed here? Eh, him with a Teferi out is not the end of the world. Max on seven. I just have to draw something gassy next turn. But yeah, I, I would have basically been able to Shock that. All right, what are we getting? Goblin Rabble Master or something? Okay. And uh, let's just take, let Teferi take it, draw. I'm just going to draw. Try to draw some action. All right, Lelia counts as action for sure. Lelia. 
hit with the Lelia into uh, an Oliphant. It's not action. So now you can double block, but I'll, I'll trade for the Rabble Master. Now you're just going to take it. All right. I'm going to play Seacrum Coast and can't do anything with the, the Oliphant. All right. I mean, I, I very well could have lost this game still. May still win it, may still lose it. Who knows? But I think I would have. It would have been a lot better to press Mari Command to kill Rona and make a treasure instead of draw two, discard two. Though I still would have. I guess the draw two, discard two did help me get to Lelia. And like the Flash and Magda wouldn't have done too much for me. But. It's all going to come down to Max last card or two here. He's got three cards left. He can flip Rona too. He can make it into a 5-5. Five five. The thing is, he's at pretty low life. If I ever draw Fiery Confluence, I just win. I've got 14 cards left. So what are, what are my big hits? Fiery Confluence is good. <laughs> Woodfall Primus is quite bad. All right. I will block the Rebel Master if you send it in. Yeah, I mean, that is a forced block. Well, the good news is you didn't kill Empress Shieldbreaker because you could have killed Teferi if you did. So that at least is there. I have white mana, but I guess actually I just, my sword is already gone. So that's like whatever. And does that mean you're going to kill Lelia and you couldn't otherwise? Or are you just going to flip? Oh, and you're going to from the catacombs get the initiative. Sure, if you have no other spell this turn, I guess I don't hate that. All right. I have a bunch of outs here. Ooh, Ragavisi. I guess if I put... <sighs> yeah, I'm going to put something back with Teferi, and the other one's going to get to block Lelia. I guess I'll tuck the Rabble Master. You have to block Lelia. Sure. It's going to be third from the top. I guess I just don't mind drawing Rabble Master, I don't think. Raghavan, attack, exile a card. If, obviously, if I exile gas, I just win. All right, well, I exile the land. I do get a, a draw off the top of Max deck, <laughs> which is nice. All right, you get to loot with Rona. Hopefully not something big. Don't draw Titan of Industry. Nope. All right, and then I get to loot. Or I get to take the initiative. Oh, I guess I get to reshuffle the Goblin. So my hand deck is Counterspell, Fiery Confluence, Flame Tongue, Hole Breacher, Leyline Binding as action, plus Thirst as card draw, and a Woodfall Primus. I really hope I don't draw. What do I hit? I hit Swamp off Max deck. All right, I'll play the Mountain out of the Exile Zone. Pass the turn. Raghavan back in hand. What a close game. He could attack with one token. I mean, he gets to take initiative back with from the Catacomb. The best thing he can do, I guess, he can't really take... The Gilded Drake, because the Gilded Drake kills him. He can put, I guess, Fairy Mastermind into play. <laughs> it's actually a pretty sad set of creatures in the graveyard, isn't it? He could Brain Maggot, I suppose. I mean, we'll see. Mm hmm. <laughs> Dothy Voidwalker. Oh no. He had to have drawn a removal spell then? Or is he just getting Dothy Voidwalker back and just leaving the two goblins back? Oh, okay. Sure. I have so many outs here. All right. Let's dash Raghavan. Attack. All right. Thirst. Oh, Fiery Confluence. That is game 3-0. We get to change a card. I never said what card I wanted. I'll have to think about that. I'll be more prepared next time. And uh, Max got to have something pretty absurd here. I mean, I don't know what he could have. He could have Force of Will or something, I guess. But that didn't seem likely. All right. 3-dub. I mean, this deck was an eminently fair blue-red tempo deck. But it had Counterspell, Memory Lapse, Days, Hole Breacher. I mean... Rabble Master, Fable, Lelia, just like a really good set of threes. And uh, 
we've got swords to plowshares. We've, we've got a lot of awesome stuff. So plus the flash primus thing did seem worth it. All right, that'll do it. We 3 0 Our team just crushed them. I think we ended up being, winning, beating like eight, eight to one or something like that. And uh, that was a successful draft. Dungeoneers pack did not impress. All right, that'll do it for today. I appreciate you watching me draft Just Guy Fair cards, and uh, it worked out pretty nicely, I will say. I'll be back tomorrow with another draft. I will see you there. Thanks for watching.